Hi everyone, in this lecture I'm going to introduce you to the Animal Trivia False Stack application. This is the first False Stack application that we are going to build from the very beginning, from scratch, from the ground up. And uh, I've called this an Animal Trivia application. You can come up with a better name. And you can take this idea and you can create another project as well. So first off, we are going to go, go over uh, the features of this uh, application, this web application. And this lecture is basically dedicated to just uh, getting to know this application. And then throughout this section, we are going to build this from the, from the ground up. So on the first page, you can see that we are on this. We are... Uh, live on the local host port, uh, port uh, 5000. So here we have the main page or the home page of our application. And I've opened it in uh, Google Chrome. So first off, we can see that we have a title here. We have animal trivia. And then it says add a new question. We have a button that is going to add a new question. Now, this is the reason that I taught you uh, HTML5 and CC3 because we were going to use them in false in creating false stack applications. And whenever you are you want to create web applications, there is no escaping HTML and CSS. So first we are we can see that we have some questions in here. So we do have some questions. There is no limit to how many questions you can add and uh, how many questions you want to remove. You can remove them as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the first question and we are redirected to another page. You can see that the URL has changed. So in here, we can see that we have a question that says what breed of cat has a reputation for being cross-eyed. And then we have that um, the solution to that question so this is like a trivia application and then you can go to the next question this is you're going to go to next so this is question with the index of one as you can see in the url uh, url bar if you go to next question so whenever you just click on you keep on clicking and you get to the end of the questions you're going to see a button that is going to say start over and when you click on it, it is basically going to start from the first question. In here, we have two more buttons. We have home. So if you click on it, you're going to be redirected to home. So let's go back there. And if you like, you can delete that question or remove that question as well. So I'm going to go to home. This is like a sample question that I've added. So uh, in here, let's say we want to delete this question. So if I just click on the remove, then we are going to go to another page. So you can see that this is a multi-page full stack application. Then in here, it says remove a question. It is going to show you a preview of the question that you are trying to remove. And then it is going to ask you, are you sure? So if you say yes, then you will be redirected to the uh, main page if you say no so first off let's go ahead and let's click on now you're going to be redirected to the uh, home page and let's uh, remove this as well and then you're going to be redirected to that page, page as well but now when you remove it you can see that we no longer have that question in here so um, I think we are done so far I'm just going to show you how you can add a new question as well so if you just click on it this is another page that is located at this address add question you can go ahead and you can add question for example you can say um, do uh, let's say do uh, does a fish um, uh, what should I write I'm just gonna select one of these I'm just gonna say do, do you like cats and I'm gonna say yes and when you click on it it is basically going to show you that question that you have just created of course the questions that you add to this database they are going to be added to the end of the list of the questions that we have so if you come here you can see that it says do you like cats and the, the other way that you know that it is the end is it says start over so if you click on it it is going to start over and there is something that I need to show you here this is the server that is running so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so whenever we are trying to refresh the page we are going to make a get request whenever you want to add a question that is going to be a post HTTP post request 
uh, whenever you go you are re being redirected to another page that is going to also be a get request when you remove the question that is going to be a, an http post request as well we have talked about http requests i think it was the yelp uh, chapter it was the python package index where we talked about how we can retrieve data from a REST API that whenever you're trying to retrieve data, you're going to get a JSON data, like data in the form of JSON object. And then you need to like convert that into some sort of understandable data to be, to be able to use it in, uh, within your own application. But what, what we are actually trying to do in here is we are going to create this full stack application. Then I'm going to show you how you can convert all the data w within this database into a res RESTful response. We are going to talk about what a REST API is, how you can convert data into RESTful, RESTful response. And uh, because this is full stack, we are going to talk about the back a lot. Well, basically, most of uh, the focus is going to be on the back part of this application. And then when you when you create, when you make this data, you convert it into a RESTful response, any HTTP server, any HTTP request can grab that response. So you remember when we talked about the Yelp API, we grab businesses. When we try to uh, extract data from a server, we basically were actually looking for a RESTful response. The server gave us a RESTful response. Now, because we are working on the server, we are going to create that RESTful response response and if you have any kind of like react or angular or Vue or like pure javascript front end you can communicate with the server to consume that data that the rest api is going to give to you we're going to talk about all of that from start to finish i just wanted to show you that uh, this is actually a server that is running but there is one more thing that i would like to tell you as well and that is um for the purposes of this uh application i have not used an actual database so all of our data will be stored within this json file so let me just save it so you can see all of the data is stored here this is the um, we have talked about json files what they are and why do we use them we are going to talk about them a little bit more as well but basically this questions that json is going to mimic our database the reason that I did not get into database and how we can connect it with this Flask application is because um, for now, I just want to focus on how you can get, get set up and get started with creating a full stack web application with the one of the most popular Python frameworks called Flask. So that's it for the introduction of this lecture. Starting from the next lecture, I'm going to show you how we can get started. We're going to get started and I'm going to show you every little bit of code that I'm going to write to be able to create uh, this full stack application. And uh, so see you in the next lecture.